So anybody who has seen this movie knows that there is one place where we have to start with the discussion. The Walgreens references. Like, I'm sorry, I gotta get this off my chest. So they're not as bad as the Krispy Kreme references in like the Power Rangers movie, but the characters go into a Walgreens, they spend a pretty fair amount of time there. They use all these different Walgreens products, like Mary flies on these two Walgreens Roombas. By the end, they even start talking about the Walgreens again, like it's the last line of the movie. Seriously, this shit makes the Olive Garden reference in the Sonic movies look subtle. I'm sorry I gotta start with that, but whenever they did that, I was just wondering what the movies were doing. I wish I could say the references weren't bad, but they made me want to go to CVS. That's how bad they were. <laughs> okay, so real talk now, Hocus Pocus 2. If I'm gonna talk about the sequel, I should probably talk about the first one as well. I have seen Hocus Pocus so, so many times and my relationship with the movie has changed each time. I honestly didn't really like it at first and I'm still not one of the movie's super fans, but I enjoy it, and I get why there are so many people who love it. I particularly adore the Sanderson sisters and the practical effects. I always thought those were the best things about that movie. The 90s cliches always bothered me, just for not being particularly original or unique, and of course I have to talk about that goddamn virgin joke. It's not that funny to begin with, and they beat you over the head with it, like when that fake cop ass mess, so you're a virgin, like even even he looks like he's thinking, what the fuck, dude? It's just the most annoying part of the movie by far, and I am just so glad that it wasn't in the sequel. So talking about Hocus Pocus 2, I never really wanted a Hocus Pocus 2. I couldn't imagine what they would do with it, and I thought the first movie had this energy that resembled The Mask or Dumb and Dumber, and that made me sort of fear for a sequel because Son of the Mask and Dumb and Dumber 2, whatever the fuck that sequel was called, if anybody has seen those sequels, you probably know why I got the heebie-jeebies thinking of this one. So they introduce the movie by starting with a flashback. They go back to the Sanderson sisters as children, and aside from some moments of being a little extra, I think these three actually do a pretty damn good job of portraying younger versions of the characters. They basically explain how they became witches, how they got a taste for being evildoers, and as soon as they find their calling, so to speak, that's when they flash forward into the present and we are introduced to three new characters, our main characters, each of them played by a child actress. And when you put child actors in the lead role, that is a serious gamble because depending on their skill, they can either make or break the movie. Wait, wait, we're not, we're not teenagers. No, we only look young, but, but really we're... 40? So do they make the movie? Do they break it? It's a little complicated. I'll get to it in a second. So if I can sum up what I thought of this movie pretty decisively, I thought it was kind of dull for the most part. This movie in some ways is probably one of the worst sequels I've ever seen. Now it is really good to see the Sanderson sisters back with the same actresses and the same costumes, but I mean, come on, it's been 30 years since the last movie. Bette Midler's pushing 80 now. Do you really expect them to have the same energy that they did in the first one? Now, of course, they're still great, but comparative lack of energy means that for every funny moment they have, there are also a lot of awkward moments, and I mean a lot of them that you have to put up with in the movie. If you're looking for something fresh and new, you will not find it here. This movie is basically a beat-for-beat -beat repeat of the one that came before it. The main characters light the black candle and accidentally bring the Sanderson sisters back to life. Sanderson sisters return to their cottage. The main characters get away with their spell book, which they plan to use to enact a spell that will allow them to survive past sunrise. So they go after them to get the book back. The witches hunt them down throughout the town, and at one point they hypnotize the adults with a song. For the rest of the movie, the main characters fought with the Sanderson sisters, but eventually the Sanderson sisters do regain the upper hand, and they get the book back, and kidnap a member of the main party, which leads to a final confrontation in the forest. It is literally beat for beat. The one thing I think they did differently was they bring Billy, the Doug Jones zombie, back, and his role is different than it was in the first movie, but that's about the only different thing I can really think of. Now that being said, I did get some laughs from this movie. Honestly, I think I got more laughs from this one than I did the first. It has some good jokes, and unlike the first movie, where a lot of the jokes were dependent on the Sanderson sisters' delivery and performances, a lot of the jokes do genuinely land. They don't need that extra push from the performers to do well. Like, there's this one especially funny moment in the movie where the Sanderson sisters go to this Halloween party and they're basically just dicking around with everyone there. One of the hosts offers Winnie a poison apple and she's like, you're not supposed to tell them it's poison. 
and they get into this costume contest and the other contestants are dressing as the Sanderson sisters. Some of them are men and even though they're the originals, they still end up losing the contest. It's a genuinely funny scene. I honestly feel like if they just centered the movie around them going to this Halloween party and being shitheads to everyone there, it would have been a great time. But unfortunately, they spend so much time forcing us to stick with the main characters and I gotta say, the main characters, they're not annoying, but they are so, so boring. I cannot remember a single thing about any of these three girls individually. I remember that the one with the glasses is kind of sort of a scaredy cat, but even then she grows out of that as the film goes on. Other than that, I remember nothing about any of these three. Can we talk about this? <laughs> so continuing on the Walgreens references, as much as I found them kind of cringe, when they went into the Walgreens it itself, I think there were actually some funny bits. Like the Sanderson sisters start straight up drinking and eating the products because they think they contain the souls of children. And Mary like picks up a face mask and she's like, this one's a baby. Like that, that bit was funny. And I wonder if they were going for like a sort of commentary on capitalism and commercialism or something. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. And there's this really funny B plot with the mayor of the town. All he wants in the movie is to get a candied apple. And he just can't get his hands on the damn thing because all of these forces outside his control brought on by the events of the movie just keep getting in his way. I thought that was a funny, entertaining arc and a relatable one, because I love candied apples, so yeah, I was rooting for the guy. That was, that was most, a, a good deal of my emotional investment was the candied apple. We gotta enjoy the simple things. One other problem I have with the movie though, is they love to explain the jokes when they really don't need to be explained, when they already work perfectly well on their own. There's this one scene in the flashback Winifred, there's an arranged marriage going on with her and she is to be wed to the pastor's son or something like that. And she's like, I don't want to marry him. And he's like, oh, thank God. And that bit was funny. It was so funny. And then they quickly ruin it by going in, having him go into this detailed explanation about why he doesn't want to marry her when it's so obvious. Like, it's like, dude, we know you didn't need to explain it. You just ruined the joke. They have this other example of that in the modern day where the mayor is basically talking about someone who went on GMA or something. I, I forget the line, but they made it work. They made it funny. And one of the main characters is like, you mean Good Morning America? It's like, again, guys, we know you didn't need to explain it. They also have this one bit that really confuses me. And again, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I'm obsessed with this part. I'm sorry. Like there's this one part where Winifred flies by this couple's window and they're just chilling on the couch and watching the original Hocus Pocus. That was a fourth wall joke that really confused me. And later on, you have this uh, couple show up at the Halloween party. They're dressed up as that one couple from the original movie, the wife with the snakes in her hair and the husband dressed as Satan. That fourth wall joke really confused me. Like, does the original movie exist in this universe? How does that work? And again, maybe I'm overthinking it, but that one kind of messed me up. But for all of the problems that I have with this movie and, for, and as hard hitting as those problems were, I did have a good time whenever the Sanderson sisters were on screen. It really is so good to see these characters back. They don't quite have the energy that they did in the first movie, but they still work pretty well off of each other. Their timing is great, their delivery is great, and their energy, yes, is still great. The Sanderson sisters are great, and it really is a ball to see them back. And in some ways, I actually did enjoy them even more than I did in the first movie, because as I said before, quite a few of the jokes are actually good enough to not rely on the performances to get through. So in that way, I actually did kind of enjoy them more and, and just a bit. But again, it does get really cringe. It gets really dull and they just do this like bit for bit recreation of the first movie, which is a lot. I really found myself missing the energy of the first movie. And I think that's what really makes the first movie special is its energy. The guy who directed the first movie went on to direct The Newsies, High School Musical, Descendants, and all three of those projects had a really good energy to it. And that was what I was really missing in this movie. I miss that choreographed energy, especially in the musical bits. Once again, they do this bit where the Sanderson sisters hypnotize a crowd into a flash mob with a song. 
and they basically do it with the recreation of one way or another. And you can tell that they're really trying to go for the same energy as I put a spell on you, but it's just not there. In fact, you can tell that there is a genuine effort to go for the energy of the first movie, but again, it's just not there and it really made me miss the energy of the first one. So who would I recommend this movie to? I know quite a few people who love the first one. It's like one of the greats. They treat it like scripture. Like they know every line before it's gonna happen. They know every single like sound and oomph before it happens. If you're in that crowd, I don't think you're gonna like this movie. I don't think you're gonna like the repetitiveness of it. Now for people like me who just liked the first one or who just didn't mind it, I think you're gonna have one or two reactions. I think you're either going to be fine with this movie or you're just not going to care about it. But whatever crowd you fall into, I doubt you're going to want to see this movie again. Frankly, I don't see a single reason why anyone would want to see this movie ever again after the first sitting. I understand why people watch the first one every Halloween, you know, the atmosphere. They try to replicate what made the first movie memorable, but in just about every respect as outside of the Sanderson sisters and some of the jokes, they really do fall flat, and it's unfortunate to say that. I hate to say it, I think I'm gonna give this movie a 45% crispy. It did have some good things about it, but it was very repetitive, it was very boring, and they messed up quite a few of their better moments moments with explanations and I think that honestly makes for a movie that is either too boring to remember or one of the worst sequels ever at different parts of the movie and it, it sucks to say that but that's just how it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like, share, subscribe. Come join the Crispy Kingdom. We are all royals here. I also have a gaming channel and a clip channel. Go check out the Global Nerds podcast. We would love to have you guys there. We're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. As usual, guys, this has been real crispy. And that is it, the crisp is spoken. Take care.